this uh, agri go get us agripreneurship uh, prize second webinar yeah so today we'll be talking about an interesting topic that still tries to enhance you uh, towards these uh, applications that you're doing and uh, we'll talk about mostly the online your online profile and your online presence so like we said it is very vital time for agri-food entrepreneurs and this is the time you really need to innovate as much as possible this is the time you need to think about how you can replace the import foods with locally domestically available products how you can help the farmers to diversify the crop so that we can have very nutritious food how you can deliver directly to consumers now, now that there are problems with the delivery and transportation so without much ado uh, the, the competition is about the two winners uh, who will go and pocket 50,000 uh, USD, uh, a, a male entrepreneur and a female entrepreneur. And then we'll have 250 applicants that will benefit from an online training. And there's something for everyone because just as an application, you automatically get a profile, uh, an online profile, which we will be talking about more. And, uh, so you know your profile uh, is your first impression to investors and other commercial partners that are interested to partner with you and invest in your enter enterprise. So uh, today we're also lucky to have uh, other speakers who will talk to us. We have uh, Eleni Gabremadin, who is a, a Generation Africa ambassador and she's chief happiness officer at Blue Moon. So she'll be talking to you uh, on a video shortly. We also still have Batil Van Voog, uh, who is going, who is our expert from VC4A. And then we have Jane, our communications expert. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk to Eleni uh, shortly. Hi everyone, my name is Eleni Gabrametin and I am the Chief Happiness Officer and Founder of Blue Moon, Ethiopia's first agri-tech youth incubator. And I'm also the lead judge this year for the Go-Getters Agricultural Transformation Prize for all you Go-Getters out there trying to transform African agriculture uh, and create and run great startups uh, with this 50,000 prize that will help you uh, build and grow your business and make your dream come true. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something really important to me, uh, near and dear to my heart, and that is the, the importance and process of building a personal brand uh, and uh, establishing an online presence as a company. And that's something that I'm going to be looking uh, at quite seriously as a judge because um, it is so important for building your business. Um, so let's just get right into it. So what's a personal brand? You know, personal branding is actually not about you. It's about putting your stamp on the value that you deliver to others. Um, and, and everyone has a personal brand. If you don't have a personal, a powerful and visible personal brand, then you're putting yourself at a disadvantage in almost every aspect of your professional business and even personal life. Personal branding has become a requirement for anyone looking to grow their business, to get a better job, to get noticed by the press, to grow um, your career uh, or take your business to the next level, and even to make high quality friends. At the end of the day, your brand is about your story um, and the story behind what you're doing, your business, your startup, and everybody has a story. And so it's really about how much of your story you are sharing and connecting with other people with. Um, we all love stories. There's nothing as powerful as a story. Um, and when we hear a story, we connect to the emotion behind it. We connect to the values uh, of the person telling the story, of the personality, of the heart behind that story. And that's the most powerful thing in, in any line of business that you're in is to create that connection, whether it's to your 
potential clients, whether it's to um, investors, whether it's to business partners, um, potential business partners, uh, people that will support you in ways that you don't even know, um, and even to people that will join your dream as, as employees or co-founders uh, down the road. Um, so you just never know what happens when you start to get out there and you start to connect with people with this story that is who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. And in that process, you build a brand around yourself and around your business. And when you're a startup, by the way, and you're an entrepreneur, there's very little difference uh, it's very symbiotic, uh, the connection between your personal brand and your business brand. Um, and so, in fact, I'm going to share a quote with you that is that entrepreneurship is fundamentally personal. It's about why and what you're doing and what motivates you and why you're, you know, doing this thing and, and why it's important and sharing that with other people amplifies your power. And we know some of those big brands um, of people that have used their personal brand with their business. Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, and Closer to Home. We have brands in Africa that are people who we admire and we like and we follow. Uh, and we know about who they are, but also their business. People like Aliko Dangote or Strive Masiwa and, and many others. Um, so what is personal branding? It's the ongoing process of establishing an image or an impression in the minds of others. Um, and it's really, uh, you know, something that we can all do. Everyone has a unique personal brand because we're all unique. Um, and whether you know it or not, you are already a personal brand. It's really about whether you own your brand, whether you control your brand, whether you control and own and shape the narrative about you and your purpose and, and your values that is already, you know, going out, out there. So um, it's about establishing a powerful and attractive and visible presence in the minds of others. And you can do that online and in purpose. I'm going to be more focused on online uh, because that's such a powerful tool that we have and that is uh, the most important tool that we have right now. So that's obviously something that I would want you to focus on very consciously, but obviously also in purpose. Uh, personal branding um, establishing is also important. The other thing that's really something I want to focus on is the importance of the fact that your personal brand is an authentic display of the engaging aspects of your professional and personal activities and interests and values. So authenticity, integrity, that's a key part of all this. You can't be somebody else and pretending or building a brand around somebody else's story or something that doesn't really ring true or resonate with who you are will not work. So stick to who you are, be yourself, be authentic, um, and it will be the most powerful thing you do. So why do you need a personal brand? Why does this all matter? Well, one reason is because opportunity will find you. When you are out there telling the world, sharing your purpose, your values, who you are, what you're doing, your dreams, your hopes, uh, your vision, then things you didn't expect start to come your way and opportunity comes knocking at your door and that's important. The second is that there is a tremendous online networking power that you can build through build, establishing a personal brand and an online presence. Um, it actually helps to build your business. Uh, you are out there and somebody starts to notice you and they start, you know, paying attention. And before you know it, um, somebody comes and says, hey, I want to partner with you. I want to invest in you. I, I think we can do something together. Let's, you know, share in this uh, opportunity. And all of this is um, part of something that I want you all to remember, which is my favorite word, which is serendipity. Um, when you are out there building your personal brand and your personal brand starts to amplify, then things you had no idea that you had no expectation could happen 
will start to happen. And serendipity, for those of you who don't know what it means, is the occurrence of something wonderful and unexpected. So in unexpected ways, good things start to come your way. And that is why building an online presence also matters. And finally, it builds your confidence. It builds your confidence in what your purpose is and what you're doing. You start to get feedback that makes you a stronger uh, contender um, and, and a player um, as people start to notice what you're doing and that grows and, and amplifies on its own. So how do you do it if it's such a great thing? How do you build a personal brand? Uh, well, first of all, is to start thinking of yourself as a brand. And a lot of times we don't do that. We just think, oh yeah, there's Oprah Winfrey and you know, um, so-and-so, but I'm not a brand. I'm just some young person, you know, who doesn't know anything. What do I have to tell people? And you know, why would I be out there? I'm, I haven't made it yet. Well, no, that's actually not true. You are a brand because you have dreams and you have aspirations and you matter. Um, and as you're building your brand, the second thing is to start identifying your uniqueness and your strengths. Um, and third is to own your space. Um, you know, you're in a certain domain of expertise, you have um, an experience or a, 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 let's say you were working in a certain field, maybe you're working on converting waste into, I don't know, biogas uh, for, for um, I don't know, um, you know, repurposing waste, for example. Um, now in that field, there will be other people. So find out you know what's going on in your domain and start to share and 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 spread you know knowledge about your field and establish yourself as an authority in your own domain and that's really important own your space and when you start sharing your knowledge people start to pay attention so they're saying wow here's this person um you know in, in somewhere let's Let's just say you're in Senegal and you're trying to, you know, work on this ag waste uh, project and you start to share, you know, consistently knowledge about your domain and about, you know, what the trends are and what some important, you know, um, articles that you found. You share those and people start to say, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. They're sharing knowledge that is actually, you know, making my life kind of uh, enriched and, and I'm going to start following this person. This person is, is on to something interesting and that's how you start to build traction. Um, now, the other is that we are not all the same. I think we've already talked about authenticity. We've talked about your unique uh, strengths and, and um, you know, your unique aspects of who you are. So when you're building your, your, your online presence and your personal brand, be yourself. Find your own style. You know, you don't have to do exactly what Oprah Winfrey does or what... Um, I don't know, whoever else you're following, uh, Bill Gates. I mean, everybody has their own style. Find your own style and be yourself. And that's really, really also important. Um, identify your values and, and your priorities and make sure that that's the, the consistent message that you are sharing with others is, is that, you know, you um, have certain values and, and those are coming out in the, in the personal brand that you're building. Um, the other um, tip is to craft your personal brand persona. And craft is a skill. It's something we work on. We hone it, we refine it, um, and we think about it consciously and intentionally. So when you're building your personal brand persona um, and you're doing something really serious and technical and you're you know, um, using artificial intelligence to build a platform, etc., you know, think about the persona of uh, behind your brand. Maybe you want to mix it like I do sometimes. I, I post uh, stories and, and things about, you know, myself as a mother, uh, as somebody in my community and, and tell that personal story so that it's part of uh, the brand that I have, of, you know, the, the, the professional work that I'm doing, my business, um, and kind of make that also a softer side of it. Um, it's just as something that I've consciously decided to do. We don't all have to do that, but that's something that I've decided will work for me. And that's part of how I've crafted my personal brand. Um, so, so let's just, you know, again, work through some of the practical steps uh, of this creating a consistent, powerful online presence that becomes your personal brand. Um, so 
I've already said the importance of, of thinking of yourself as a brand. Uh, the second thing is something that I want to encourage all of us to do uh, and to do very consciously and it's to audit your online presence. And I know when we say audit, we think of this terrible thing, a uh, financial audit and you know, God help us all. Um, it's not fun uh, and I don't wish it on anyone, but auditing yourself uh, in terms of your online presence is a really powerful thing because you go back and say, okay, over the last six months, what have I posted about? Um, you know, my uh, adventures on New Year's Eve with my friends, hanging out at a bar and, you know, hanging out um, at the lakeside, you know, looking real nice or whatever. That's fine, but is that is that the personal brand that you're building? Um, so going back and looking at the trends, looking at what, you know, you have been putting out there and sort of saying, okay, that's, you know, this is my starting point and now I'm going to, um, you know, build a strategy of, of, of uh, consciously putting out uh, a message about myself and, and building uh, my brand. The other thing that's really important on a very practical level, and I, and I do it as well, is to identify and follow some role models, people that you think have a great personal brand, who have a great online presence, who you find inspiring, who you follow because there's something uh, in their online presence that is, you know, enriching to you and sort of see what they're doing and, and follow them and, and sort of say, okay, you know, I'm going to start following um, somebody that I really admire. They could be in my domain or, or they could be outside of my domain, somebody like Bill Gates or Oprah Winfrey or, you know, other many examples that I could give of people that you say, you know, I like the way that they're that their personal brand um, resonates and, and they have this power that, that I want to sort of follow and, and learn from. So that's um, the third uh, step. The fourth is to build a platform. Um, we have different media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, your website, a blog. Now think about how all of these plat th these media work together in an integrated way. You don't have to necessarily put out the same message on each platform, but I think what is relevant is to craft it in a way that it all kind of makes sense. And it's all part of, all of these are part of building this personal brand and this online presence that will enrich your business and, and your purpose. Um, now, the other thing, and I think I've kind of alluded to it, is to think about and find ways to produce value. Um, when you are establishing yourself as an expert in your domain uh, and you start to consistently share stories or retweet other people's articles or repost or share uh, things that are important, to you and to your values, other people start saying, wow, this is interesting. You know, this person is really consistently, you know, sharing really important articles. They're sometimes they're controversial, maybe a debate around some of these things that you're that are important to you and people start to pay attention and that starts to build traction. And that's also very important. So it's not only, um, you know, sharing about who you are and what your dreams and values and activities are, but it's also about adding value to other people by, you know, posting interesting things that people might say, hey, I am, you know, really enjoying reading this person's um, tweets or, or, or messages on, and posts. Um, and so when you're sharing, be purposeful um, and be, you know, strategic about how and, and uh, why you share what you share. So I think um, as we wrap up, I want to just uh, repeat a few steps about being strategic. And I think there's maybe five or six steps that I'm going to quickly uh, mention. The first is make a plan. This is work. This is, I mean, this is serious stuff. So make a plan um, and sit down and really consciously think about it and be consistent in how you do it, uh, because that's how you start to see that you know, traction building, the snowballing, uh, which is that you are consistently following a strategy that you have uh, come up with. The other thing that's really important is, like anything, is to track your results. 
So as you start implementing your plan and you have, you know, a daily message that you're going to do or every three days, and you know, mixing it in with certain things and you've, you know, you've kind of come up with a strategy, see what's working um, and kind of track it and see if, you know, it's, it's, it's working for you um, and be really intentional about how you're doing this uh, and change when it's not working. And if some things like when you pick, you know, post a picture with your dog, you get a lot more uh, followers or likes and, and comments and engagement than, you know, some dry article uh, that maybe is not working as well, then, you know, kind of tweak things and adjust and, and uh, you know, do build on what is working and, and change what's not working. Um, and um, also be opportunistic because when you are, um, you know, building your brand, you are in the context of the world we live in, the times uh, right now. It is obviously a, a, a momentous time in history for all of humanity. Um, and even if you're not in health, uh, public health field or doing something in your business that's directly relevant, you as a person and as an entrepreneur, you have some engagement and some relationship with the with this, you know, huge, you know, game-changing historical pandemic that we are all going through and you can engage in some way or another and to you know use this as an opportunity to also build um, uh, your your presence and your brand um, and also even if it wasn't you know a global pan pandemic but just a holiday or, or something that just happens that you want to highlight and you know wish people you know happy holiday or do a, a feeding uh, families of your in your neighborhood or, or something else that really kind of captures the moment to be opportunistic. Uh, and finally, finally, my last tip uh, at a very practical level is to have fun. This is this is strategic. This is intentional. This is purpose purposeful um, and important in building your business. But it's also about who you are and, and that fundamental human need we all have to connect. And there's nothing more powerful than connecting from your heart, from from you know the love that you have you are a unique person you are an entrepreneur you have dreams and aspirations that come from a good place you are trying to change and make this world a better place and to share that story with others to share who you are with others can only be something that is so personally rewarding and that will enrich you uh, as well as your business so so have fun Wow, thank you so much, Eleni, uh, for such an inspiring talk about the personal brand. Uh, that was definitely awesome. I'm sure it is going to help a lot of people out there who are uh, our go-getters who are trying to join uh, the competition. Um, then uh, we can check with Jane if there are any questions that are coming in already so that uh, we can get some answers from the experts that we have on the call today. Jane, please, over yes. to you. Yes, there are a lot of good questions coming from our audience who are watching online. And the first question for you, Dr. Eleni, um, Samara is watching and she would like to ask you, what key information should I share on social media when I am just starting my business? Uh, thank you, Jane, and uh, thank you, Samara, for that question. Uh, by the way, can you hear me? Everybody can hear me? Great. Um, so the very first thing, Samara, to share is that you are starting your business um, and that you are interested in doing X, Y, Z. And, and, you know, one of the things um, that I always tell people when they're starting is it doesn't cost anything to tag someone that is important to your business, That's somebody who you want to, to notice that this is, some, this is something you're working on. Um, you know, there's no rule that says you can't tag um, anybody under the sun. So when you're starting out, tell people what you're doing, tell them why you're doing it, um, tell them what you hope to achieve, tell them to, you know, to follow you and, and, and support you and, and track you, uh, and that you're going to be keeping them updated, make a commitment, you know, to, to your, to your uh, community that you're going to do this, and then tag, tag the president of your country, tag, tag, you know, the big fund that you hope to one day get 
uh, money from. It doesn't cost anything and, and you might get on their radar, radar and you might find yourself being invited to a conference for something that you know will lead to all these other things. So you just never know. Thank you for that answer, Dr. Eleni. Uh, Zawadi is keen to know how long she can expect to wait before she starts seeing results and opportunities from online presence and brand, uh, brand building efforts. Uh, Zawadi, um, you know, obviously I don't know your, your, um, your, your social media yet, but uh, maybe I will. But one of the things I, I like to tell people is, you know, it's also the quality of what you're putting out there. Like if you're posting pictures uh, of an event that you attended or yourself, you know, doing something relevant to your work, make sure it's a good picture. Uh, there's almost a direct correlation uh, between, um, you know, the quality of the content and the response by people. People will like things that, you know, are appealing, uh, a picture that's kind of fuzzy uh, in a dark place, it's not going to get much traction. Um, if you post something engaging, you know, use TikTok, um, use whatever media you have or, or whatever tools you can get uh, to make it lively and engaging and upbeat and, and, and short, by the way. Nobody likes long-winded social media messages. We get our attention span, unfortunately, is getting shorter and shorter. So keep it short, keep it upbeat, keep it high quality, and you will definitely see results pretty quickly. And also, um, try to think about embedding a call to action. So if you are, you know, um, I don't know, launching your food delivery business, let's say, and I, again, I don't know what you do, but let's say you're doing something with, you know, farmer to, to farm to table logistics business, um, you know, make a little video of yourself doing that. Ask people to like it, ask people to, to give you comments. And when people are asked to do things, they respond. And when they're engaged um, and when they're doing something in response, then they tend to come back and, and start to really, you know, be interested in, in, in you. Uh, and that's kind of what you're trying to do is create that connection. Great, thank you for that. Um, the final question for you, Dr. Eledi, is from Adugna. And Adugna would like to uh, know how um, to expand a business to the growth stage by exporting products, especially cash crops from Ethiopia? Uh, okay, so um, I don't know what kind of cash crops Adunya is exporting, but um, there are likely uh, uh, markets uh, that he's targeting abroad. Um, so one of the things to find out is who are the big buyers out there? Um, you know, if it's Sainsbury in the UK, then start following Sainsbury. Start finding out what where Sainsbury's you know current procurement is. Do some research and then use that medium to kind of you know do a, a little campaign. Again, it's all about that strategy, right? So if you're saying, okay, I want to hit the Middle East market and the UK market and uh, I don't know the um, it, Italian market for this product that I have, then I'm going to create a campaign that will be kind of interesting. To those countries because I'll know a lot about them already. So I'll have done some research, I'll be on their social media, I'll be following uh, what they're doing um, and, and then sort of, you know, tailor my message uh, and tag them as I, as I put my message out there that this is now a product that I'm launching, I hope to be exporting, uh, tag those companies that you're targeting and then see where that goes. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for, for the valuable information. Um, I will hand over back to Dixit now to take us through the rest of uh, today's program. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Jane and Dr. Eleni for those, that, that Q&A. Uh, those, those are great answers uh, that if our users and our listeners uh, apply, they're, they're gonna get far, so de definitely. Um, so, Dr. Eleni spoke more about the personal brand. Uh, and now we are going to bring in Batil, who is going to talk about your business profile on the GoGetters platform and how that fares. So Batil, welcome and uh, talk to us about the business pro profile in the, in the platform. Thank you very much, uh, Dixon. And uh, it's, it's great to be back uh, since, uh, since last week. 
uh, when we spoke uh, about how to make the most of your application. This webinar is also still uh, visible on the Go Get It's Facebook page. So if you missed that, have a look at that because it will give you some uh, tips and tricks on how to make the most of your, your application. Uh, and thank you very much, Dr. Lenny, for your insights. I've, uh, I've learned uh, quite a bit, I must say. Uh, every day uh, is, is, a, is a new opportunity to learn. So thank you very much for sharing those uh, insights. Um, I would like to spend a few minutes on uh, indeed uh, building your, your business profile online and the importance of having a consistent um, uh, presence in the places that matter most. And uh, Dr. Eleni already touched on, on some parts, um, but I would like to speak uh, about the, the VC4A business profile that you uh, can create as part of your Go Get Us 2020 application. Uh, it's actually the second step after submitting your application and it is a required step. So even if you have already applied, uh, you can still uh, do that and we connect your application to your, to your venture profile. Then we'll talk a bit about your website, about social media, um, and then lastly about uh, presenting your business online when you speak to a potential business partner or investor. Uh, because of COVID-19 crisis, um, meeting face-to-face -face is, uh, is uh, impossible in, in some places or at least much, much harder than, than before. And so I wanted to uh, spend a, a, a few minutes on that as well. Um, so uh, let me uh, uh, share my screen uh, with you to, uh, again, like last week, have a look at the, the VC Fray uh, platform um, and uh, guide you to some of the steps. So um, when you have applied to Go Get Us 2020, you will see a confirmation screen that you have uh, submitted your application. But there's also a message that says that you have to complete the application by creating a venture profile on the VC Fray platform. What that means is that you get an publicly visible page that will also be findable on Google and other search engines where you can present your business to a large community of people who are interested in getting to know startups from across Africa. Uh, and don't worry, it will not be a lot of work because we pre-fill uh, the information uh, from your application into the creation uh, uh, of the venture profile form. And so my venture here doesn't exist, but it's just an example is Solar Cool uh, from Kenya. And you will see that all of the details that I've filled in in, in my application are now also uh, added to this, to this form. Um, if you do think you want to, you know, add something or, or adapt something before you create your profile, you can still do that. Uh, it's very basic information about your, about your business and your website and your social media channels if you have them. You click pub publish and then uh, you see uh, the, the venture profile uh, as it is and, and you will immediately see that there are uh, some key aspects missing. Um, so it is possible to create um, an, a cover image which is a nice uh, banner image that you can uh, upload by clicking this button. Um, one of the key things that uh, every business should have and you should think about if you don't have one yet is a, is a clear logo and by clicking the logo space you can uh, basically upload it and, and even crop it if you want. Um, then uh, you can uh, go to the uh, edit profile details section here on the right top corner uh, to uh, uh, fill in additional information about your business. Um, so if you have an, a video on uh, Vimeo or YouTube, you can paste it there. You can add your phone number. So people who um, have uh, access to that detail, uh, like investors, they can call you or send you a message on, on WhatsApp. Um, and you can uh, also talk more about your team. So you can describe your team. You can fill in additional information about your team. Um, you can add uh, important dates about your traction. So if you're, is your venture incorporated? Do you have a pitch uh, deck? Uh, do you have paying customers? Do you have uh, audited accounts? These kind of things. This is not information that is publicly available. So part of your venture profile will be publicly available. Part of it will be 
behind the login for investors. So we have an offering for investors and they get access to uh, certain parts of your profile that you don't want to share with everybody, but that you do want to share with people who are genuinely interested in your business. Um, then there's the impact section. So you can select uh, one or multiple um, uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. And you can also select, uh, the, the, you can also fill in the, the impact in an open uh, text uh, field. Um, and then uh, there are uh, additional things that you uh, can do on the tabs themselves. So in the team section, you can add uh, team members. So it's really important, like I also described last uh, week, to highlight uh, the key uh, people who you're working with. And so you can describe that here and you can uh, talk about their, their position and about uh, what they add to the, to the, to the team. Um, then there's also the fundraising section where you can uh, indicate the amount of money you're looking for, the type of finance, um, and uh, if you have already raised investment before. And to back that up, there's also a document section that uh, can be filled with your pitch deck, with your business plan, with your uh, proof of incorporation. And the, the traction, the fundraising and the documents tab are only accessible by investors who are going to review um, your business. And basically uh, they can access additional information about you before they contact you. If they want to contact you, they can just click a button, write a message, and then you uh, receive it and you can take the conversation to WhatsApp or a phone call or, or Zoom or Skype or any other communication uh, means. So this is the, the venture profile of Mango Craft, one of the winners of uh, Go Get Us 2019. And you see that it's nicely filled in with a logo and a, and a nice uh, cover image and a description. And there's all kinds of overview uh, information. And then also the blog articles that we posted last year about them. Um, so this is just, this, just to give you an, an idea of what a, a venture profile on PC Fray uh, means. And when you create a venture profile, you also get access to the other things that we offer on the platform, like uh, already described the investor uh, network. So when you put up a fundraising request, you uh, are findable by people uh, from the investment community. Um, there's a mentorship marketplace where you can put up your uh, mentor request. And then uh, we have more than 400 mentors who are interested in supporting uh, startups like yourself. Uh, and then we have a program section where, um, you know, Go Get Us is, 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 is one of the programs that uh, we promote. But there are many more uh, programs that might be interesting for you and you can uh, uh, scan through them and you can uh, decide to apply to other opportunities as well. Uh, you also will receive a, a bi-weekly newsletter uh, when you uh, are a PC Frame member. And then uh, last but not least, we've created a startup academy uh, where we interviewed over 80 different people in the startup ecosystem across Africa uh, and they share their tips on four different topics about starting your business, it's about growing your business, it's about financing your business, and it's about the legal side of your business. Um, and next week we'll dive into that uh, a little more. Um, what is important for you to know is that all of the uh, services that we offer are free of charge. So even the courses, you can enroll in them uh, at any moment. And when you complete all modules, you get a certificate of completion with your name on it, which is a nice uh, way of showing that you have uh, acquired certain knowledge, especially the finance your business course has a lot of very useful information about the different steps in uh, a funding process of a startup. And investors will definitely um, appreciate it if you, if you understand the language they're speaking. Um, so that is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the, the, the PC for a platform and the value you'll get when you create a venture profile, as we call it. Then um, when uh, Dr. Eleni and the other judges are reviewing uh, your application, uh, one of the things they will be looking at is your venture profile, but they will also review your website. 
Now, we do get questions from people who say, I don't have a website yet. What should I do? Um, what, what I tell them is, uh, even, even if you are just starting, try to have an online presence uh, on, on, a, on an URL that you own. And I know that there are some costs um, that come with, with um, hosting and, and, and website, but there are very um, many low cost uh, um, ways to do that. Like Wix, W-I-X, is a way to, uh, for, for a small amount, have a nice uh, website that is hosted by them um, with your own domain. And you can use that in the first year when you're just starting and at least you have a presence. Or you set up a, a, a blog or a website on WordPress, which is also uh, really affordable. Um, and I say that it's so important because if you are not uh, findable online um, in times of COVID-19, but even before that, uh, people will take you less serious. They they uh, will want to know why you're not why you're not online, and they might think you're not really serious about your business. So I really want to emphasize on the fact that you need to maintain an online presence on your own domain um, uh, as soon as you can. And then social media, I won't dive into that too much uh, because Dr. Eleni already did that, but uh, pick the ones that matter to you. You don't have to be on N every social media channel, but pick the ones where you have your audience. And uh, uh, so, so if that is indeed on TikTok and not on Twitter, then, then, then uh, use TikTok, but uh, do it well. So, so the ones you pick, Go, uh, go for it and, and make sure you have a plan for it and that you update it regularly with content that, that matters. Um, lastly is um, your, your deck. So your presentation when you meet somebody, it's called uh, an, a business deck or an investment deck. It's a, it's a presentation which can be on PowerPoint or another um, uh, technology like Prezi or, or other uh, presentation tools um, where you have an introduction to your company and an introduction to what you need. If you are looking for a partnership, the deck will end the, about the partnership you're looking for. If you're looking for investment, that is what the deck will end with. And it's very good to be working on, on such a presentation, uh, even in early days, because it also uh, forces you to think about certain things that people need to understand about your business. What is the problem that you're solving? What is the solution that you're bringing to the market? And, and how are you different from others? And when you get in touch with a pr prospective partner or a prospective investor, um, back in the po uh, post uh, or pre-COVID-19 uh, days, you could uh, possibly uh, meet face-to-face uh, -face at some point. And the way it looks like now, uh, that will be quite difficult for the, for the coming, uh, foreseeable future. So when you present your business online, um, you have to also realize that uh, there are some limitations there. Uh, because usually you have six things that you get when you uh, present which is you have your words, you have your slides, you have your voice, you have the body language, you have eye contact, which is really important, and you have direct feedback from your audience. And uh, David Beckett, who is a well-known pitch coach, he uh, spoke about this uh, recently when he said, actually the body language, because you're in a very small screen next to your presentation, the eye contact, and the direct feedback from the audience is missing when you present online. Even me now, I don't see your reaction or I can't see who you are. And so it's really uh, important to also understand that these are limitations and that you need to um, uh, yeah, prepare yourself for that and maybe rehearse uh, a couple of times, maybe with somebody on the other side of the connection uh, who you already know, uh, but just to get a feel of what it is like to present in front of your screen uh, without a, a direct uh, connection with your, with your audience. Um, and then of course, technology is also a barrier. So get to know the tools that you, that you will use and uh, also test your uh, connectivity and get to uh, a, an internet connection that is, uh, is stable and that's working well. Um, 
also the camera position there's some really practical things but if if i'm going like this uh i'm looking sort of down on you i'm i'm not in the screen fully these kind of things or when i'm like going away too far i become very small and uh, so so uh, also think about how you're being seen on the other side and um try to look people in in the eye on the camera which is also sometimes weird to do when you're when you're just sitting on, on your own in front of the screen um and then it's about uh yeah speaking with uh, emphasizing on the words that really matter um and that is something that is uh that has to do with presentation skills uh but uh, it's quite easy to get into some sort of a, a monotone flow when you present but it's important to keep the energy up and to uh engage the audience with your with your message the same as what i'm trying to do at this very moment um and then last but not least and what we also try to do in the webinars is also to give people time to ask questions and to respond to these questions so you keep them uh, keep them engaged uh, these are some of the things i wanted to share with you i hope uh, it's it's something you, um, you 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 will start thinking about if you haven't done so yet uh, there are also some some interesting uh, uh, websites and tools that you can use for um, finding uh, good examples for uh, photos or icons to use in your deck or to record your pitch or um, to uh, you know uh, broadcast your 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 pitch uh, i will share some of these links in the comments on the on the facebook page and um, that's it for now um, yeah i'm looking forward to answering some questions wow great thank you so much uh, batil uh, You'll agree with me that the go-getters entrepreneurship competition is not just about the prize. It's 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 really an inspiration and an ongoing learning session. So you get quite a lot just by that application, and you have a profile that is visible by important people like investors. So we'll jump on to the Q and A uh, with Jane again. Uh, let's pick a few questions and and see how that goes. I can see we are running out of time, but yeah, let's uh, do that. Sure. So, Bertol, you uh, place a lot of emphasis on the importance of having online uh, business presence, but a lot of our audience uh, would really like to know how important is having uh, an online business presence, um, and, and how important was it during the judging process last year? Um, they want to know, did, you, did the judges do research on the personal brands of different competitors? Yeah. Good question. So uh, I think one of the one of the first things judges look at when they review the team is also to see if they're available on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is really the place to be to build your personal brand in a professional manner, I would say. So when you describe your team in the application, uh, don't hesitate to add LinkedIn profiles to the team descriptions. Um, because it is something that the, the judges look at for sure. Um, and then also when you click to the LinkedIn profile that there is a picture uh, of, the, of the people in your team on their profiles and that they have a, a good description of what they have been doing so far. Um, so uh, every link and every you know, online presence you can add to your application is, um, is a plus, absolutely. Great. Okay, there is a, a final question from Suleka from Ethiopia, and she wants to know um, whether she needs to pay for uh, to make use of the BC4A services. No, like I already said, uh, we have chosen to um, uh, create uh, all of our services for entrepreneurs free of charge. So we have different business models where we work together with other organizations who provide content and programs and, and, and other um, key uh, resources for entrepreneurs. Um, they uh, contribute uh, often financially uh, to, to the work that we're doing, um, but for entrepreneurs, it's absolutely free. Okay, perfect. I think uh, that's all we have time for today. So back to you, Dixon. Thank you so much for that uh, short Q&A. Uh, this is really getting more and more interesting as we continue with the webinars. Uh, you can be sure that we still have one more webinar. This is to tell you that we really want you to succeed. 
uh, not just win the competition, but also succeed as a, an entrepreneur. And if you don't through this, then I don't know what kind of prayers uh, we will need. So um, next webinar is going to be talking about how you can find information that will help you run your business and manage your business online. So apparently there's a lot of uh, online learning resources like the one we've seen today uh, for VC4A. Uh, Blue Moon are also uh, having this kind of uh, programs. And our work is to curate this content to you so that you can succeed. So let's see how we can do that during the next uh, webinar. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.